Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all doing fantastic. In this video, we are going to look at getting the items that we've already made, the cylinders, the valve chest covers, the valve chest, the cylinder end covers. We're gonna try and get all those so they can be bolted on, but we need to make some studs. And for that, I've bought a bit of stainless. And this is going to be for the valve chest covers. Because they are quite long, there was nothing I could find off the shelf that I was happy with. And most of them were mainly steel. The valve chest cover is one that you may, may need to take off. So we don't want it to be totally permanent and rust on and cause issues. So if I make them out of stainless, then that should cover us for any issues taking them off in the future. And for the cylinder end covers, we can get away with the exhaust manifold studs. I've bought some, but I need to trim them down. And I'll show you how I cut the exhaust studs down later on. But now we shall make the long studs on the lathe. As you can see, I have set up the dial test indicator with my collet block as previously seen in the last video and I've got it dialed in rather close hopefully you can see that it is hardly moving so I'm happy with that so we'll get some 8 mil in and then we'll start mucking about and seeing what we can get So if I bring this up to here and touch it, lock it off, it means I can get them all exactly the same length. So let's see what happens. Now, yeah, what's happened there? Why has that moved? just gonna lock my bed off I think it moved no, that shouldn't move now right we're sorted we got a bit close didn't I oh yeah pillock There we go. I'm doing it a bit close. All right, so I'll bring that up to the spigot. What I do notice when you use one of these is it's less likely to mark the metal, whereas trying to grip something small in a chuck, I always find that you end up getting marks in. So these have an advantage because they grip further around the material. So we've got our blanks. They're now cut to length. I'm now gonna face off this lumpy bit and I'll get as close as I can to that edge and I'll do all that one end and then I'll flick it around and I'll machine them to length. I'll do a couple and then we'll jump to the next stage because it's, you know, you don't need to see it all, do you? as quick as it is and it's uh, quite a nice finish but it's that quick like I said I'll uh, 
I get all the get them done, and then we'll do the other end, and then we'll move on to. I'll get them chamfered, and then threaded. I don't know if any of you guys watch a YouTube channel called Matty's Workshop, but he just did a build on making some backstops for these, which looks quite interesting. Something I might uh, consider making myself. Because it looked quite smart. Nice little build project. So yeah, go check that out. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description. But if you don't follow Matty, go watch him, he's a great machinist. He's a nice guy too. Okay, so we've got the little short pieces now cut to length and faced off. Um, got a box of them. Uh, now I'm going to thread each end so it goes in the cylinder head. And then there's a thread on the top so we can tighten down the cover. So we'll get them threaded. So that now is all of the long studs finished. Threaded both ends, look quite good. So now we'll shorten down the exhaust studs. It's quite simple, you just need a saw. So you've got your exhaust studs and they're this long, but you want them to be that long. I'm gonna show you a quick trick. What you do is you get yourself some ground flat stock. You then machine it to the length of your thread. So the width of it is the length of your thread. You drill a hole and then you thread it. So in this case, M8. Then you heat treat it to cherry red, quench it. You'll end up with a hardened piece just like this. Why have you hardened it? Because you can screw your stud in, finger tight, just like that, place it in your vise, and using a hacksaw, you can cut off the surplus. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
like so. And when you unscrew it, it knocks the burr back. And it doesn't make a mark because it's hardened. It doesn't wear in. So you can keep cutting as many as you want. You can turn it around like so and cut the other side and just keep cutting until you have as many as you need. Just like so. And these are now the same length. We just need to get rid of these burrs. Handy little tip that. And you can do it for any size, any size bolt, any length. Say you wanted to cut that bolt down. You could screw that in all the way. And there you are, you've got a short bolt. Clean the end up. You can either do that with a file, or if you can get it in your lathe, gripping it on the, on the head, just take that off and you've got a short bolt. All from a piece of ground flat stock that's hardened and you can keep this. And if you get different sizes and different thicknesses, you're covered, you can do any bolt you want, any length. We need to take that burr off. You could file them, or you could use a bench grinder, maybe a pair of pliers holding them. Not very safe. Or because we have the collet block, set up in the lathe, we could just use that and just take that edge off and make them look nice and pretty. Best bit with this, with little jobs like this, you don't need to tighten it up. Hand tight is sufficient. Beautiful. Just another 27 times to go. We have those now done. We've got the small ones cut down with the hacksaw and then just chamfered off and deburred. And then we've obviously made the big ones. Before we can put them on the cylinders, we've got some extra stuff to do to the valve chests. Like we need to put a hole in for where the steam goes in. I don't have a three quarter drill, so this is a three quarter two flute. So that should do it. And uh, I'm having to use the quill because I've totally finished off the Z axis scale. I've completely broke it now. It's been broken for a while, but now I've totally finished it off. So I'm going to have to use the uh, quill. I'm going to go in about five eighths. I'm not going all the way through. I don't need to.
Beautiful. Right, we'll get the tap in that. Obviously, I don't have a tap wrench this size. So, a pair of spanners will do. Look, and I'm finally using one of these. Everybody keeps telling me I need. Job done. So that's half inch BSP. And that's a half inch hole, so that's, that's how thick the pipe will be. Nice. Obviously it goes to there. Very nice. I think we'll call that a success. We have managed to get all the bits bolted on to the cylinders. They're now, I think, looking the part, they, they, they look like cylinders, don't they? They look like they're ready to bolt on. As well as the exhaust port, we've got the steam inlet port now into the valve chest. We may look at putting a snifting valve into the valve chest, but we could also put it on the, the inlet steam line to the cylinders. So we'll look at both options and see which is gonna be the best. We've got all the studs in, they're looking great. We've got the ones on the ends. We might revisit the ones at the ends once the gaskets are all in, because I, I think they're just a little bit sticking out too much. I'm happy with the ones on the top, they look fine. So the only thing now left with the main bodies is the seals which I've ordered some gasket material to make the gaskets, so we can crack on with that when that arrives. Uh, and the only last thing is the hole for the slide bar. And then those bits are ready. And I suppose really we better get on with the important bits like the glands and the valves and the pistons. Then we might get some working cylinders. Stay safe. Laters. Yeah, this turned out really nice. Really nice. <laughs>